So here's the Ocean View Cabin M250 in the aft port quarter of the Carnival Imagination. This is very similar to the room that Burton and I stayed in on the Inspiration. Having just arrived, before I mess the place up with things like luggage and backpacks. So it's a pretty standard stateroom. The layout is very familiar. I've got the king bed configuration because I'm here by myself. There's that ocean view. That is a window, not a wind no. This window is a little bit different than the one we had on the Breeze. The Breeze had a little area that you could basically completely fit a person inside here. But this is uh, not got that. The window's a whole lot closer. But you can still have a fantastic view. Also, I'd say this window is probably a little cleaner and easier to see through than the one on the Breeze. So, just because you're on a bigger, newer ship, doesn't mean everything's better. Look at that. Gold. Carnival has their loyalty program called the Very Important Fun Person Club. And part of the idea with that is that uh, different um, levels of loyalty, more cruise days, gets you um, different perks. So when you start off, you're blue. That's your first cruise. Your second cruise, your status becomes red. And so at red status, you get a free drink on every cruise. Then when you reach gold, like me, you get a pin upon entry into gold level, which actually I don't see here. So I don't see a pin here. However, I did receive a pin um, on the previous sale on the Miracle, a little prematurely, so maybe they have a record of that. The record keeping these guys do is pretty amazing. So they're, I call them data ninjas. Look, I've already messed up the bed. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they have all that kind of information on record so they know that I've already received my gold pin. Gold members also receive uh, an invite to an exclusive member-only party on sailings of five days or longer. This sailing, much like our next sailing in a week and a half's time to Cozumel, they're both four-day cruises, so I don't think that there's going to be um, a member's party. So I can't speak to that. I probably won't be able to until Bermuda. After you hit gold, there's two additional levels uh, where you get different services like priority tender boarding, priority boarding to the ship, as well as laundry services gratis, which is something that I'm definitely wanting to do. I think that once I get to the point where you get free laundry services, I'll probably start looking at longer cruises, 13, 30 days, whatever. This leaves us with one question that I think you're likely to have. What the hell am I doing here? Here's what happened. 10 days ago, I get a BBM message from Sam at 10.30 at night. Uh, he sends me a picture, and the picture basically shows that there are cruises starting at $2 each, which is, like, unheard of, as you would well imagine. I get out of bed, I go straight to the computer, and yeah, they had cruises starting at $2. This was one of those cruises. So it was $2 for an interior cabin, and I think to myself, well, it's only $12 to get an uh, ocean view. I figured, oh, wow, I can spare $10 and get myself an ocean view. Unfortunately, uh, most of my friends and family are not able to get time off approved quite so quickly. Ten days notice is not a lot of time, and that's totally fair. I mean, people running a business couldn't operate that way. I had to go solo. And going solo um, basically means you pay double. Uh, you pay as if there were two people in the room, as if you were paying for both of them. Uh, and so that doubled the price from $12 to $24. I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of money. This is the $24 cruise. On top of the $24, there was $88 in taxes and port fees. That's why I am here on my own, and this is the $24 cruise. Getting onto the ship, just taking the steps onto the ship, you just feel stress and worry and fear and concerns just, just magically float away, and now you know you're on vacation, you're having fun, and there's nothing to worry about except what are you going to eat next. Your air conditioning can be located on the roof. Not all ships have the same model of air conditioning, but this one is pretty common on the Fantasy class. As you can see, turning this increases the airflow. And just back that way to close it entirely, if you like. The language on the cruise ship is a little bit different. If you find yourself referring to the buffet, you might be giving yourself away as a first-time cruiser. Most people refer to the buffet as the Lido deck. 
That's normally around deck 10. The Lido deck normally has the pool area, the main pool area, maybe a little dance stage, some entertainment things, and the buffet. So if you were to say, I'm going to Lido, or I'll meet you at Lido, you're probably referring to the food area. If you were to say, I'm going to the pool, then you would be on deck 10 Lido, but probably going to the pool. And that's how you differentiate the two. On the ship, you don't really refer to the left and right side. You normally refer to the port, or left, starboard, or right. So an easy way to remember that is port has four letters, left has four letters. Most things on the ship can be subject to movement, as the ship might encounter waves or make a turn, accelerate, decelerate, things of that nature. It's normally a very smooth ride, but safety comes first. So for example, if you were to open the bathroom door and leave it partially ajar, that would present a bit of a safety hazard if this starts moving back and forth with the ship and someone might be standing nearby. So, you'll notice at the top corner of the doors, magnets. So, the door opens and connects to the magnet, and then the magnet holds it there pretty decently. You have to use uh, not a huge amount of force, but definitely it, it's an intentional movement to, to detach that. Speaking of things moving around, you'll notice that there's this bar here in the bathroom to keep things from going where they shouldn't. Carnival does an excellent job servicing your room. They'll know when you're in the dining lounge, and that's often a time when they might strike and turn over the room and leave you an animal made of towels in their wake. But, as excellent as they are at this, the security isn't always the greatest. One time, I needed to grab my, uh, my Surface from my room. I went down to the room and it was being cleaned. I was able to sneak past the steward cleaning the room, grab my surface and leave, him being none the wiser. I'm not particularly concerned, but it was a little bit distressing to think that somebody else could have done the same thing without really being noticed. This is a recommendation I make for even a regular hotel stay. I don't care if you're at a Motel 6 or a Hilton or a Hyatt, whenever you're out of the room, it's a good practice to lock up your luggage. Get one of these TSA approved locks. TSA has a key that they can use. As you see here, it says TSA. They can use a special key to get through this, so you can leave your luggage locked, even if you're checking it at the airport. One thing that I recommend for extra space in your cabin is to take your luggage, lay it on the ground, and slide it under the bed. Often in a cabin, you'll only have one plug. I would recommend a USB charger with two ports, something like that, so that you can maximize your charging. You also probably don't want to leave it ever unused. You're going to want to consider charging something all the time. The Carnival fleet is equipped with Wi-Fi. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the kind of Wi-Fi that can get you on the internet for free. As you see here, Carnival Wi-Fi. It is a free connection and offers you a variety of services. As you can see, there are frequently asked questions and free sites. Plans refers to purchasing internet, which as you can see is rather expensive based on satellite. Hopefully upgrades in the future will bring these prices down, but at present it's really not practical. A little research will probably help you find Wi-Fi that's free at your destination or your port of call. Going into the free sites, one thing that's quite helpful is they allow you to download a copy of the Fun Times. This is your document that shows you all of the things happening on the cruise ship within the next 24 hours. It gives you the date and where you are, just to help you keep track, because you'll get a new one of these every day you sail. It's often good to discard the old one so you don't get confused. It has some information about who the captain is. It has information on the food schedule. One thing that's really important is the dress code. You'll often have an elegant night at least once every cruise. If you're not up to the dress code, you're going to Lido. So they have sort of what they consider to be a top 10 list of things going on in the day. Some information for the children, and the gamblers, and the dancers. They often have different shows that they put on at a main stage theater. My cruise director's name is Goose. So what he says is, cruise like a goose. That seems kind of strange to me. But they can't all be, uh, they all can't be butch like on the breeze. That guy was awesome. It's also a great place to find out what's happening at the Punchliner. This is the comedy club on every ship. They often have family-friendly shows and adult shows. This last section here is quite helpful. It lists out, by time, everything that's going on and where it's going on. Now this section here is detachable. Rip it along here and then take this part with you. I hope that Carnival plans in the future on bringing a messaging service to this free Wi-Fi in the form of an app. They currently have an app in beta test on the Carnival Breeze. 
so hopefully that'll be successful. But in the meantime, the easy way to communicate, old school text messages written on scraps of paper, or simply using a phone. These ships have phones all over them. Every single elevator lobby, they all seem to have phones pretty much everywhere. There's really no need to be using a cell phone to make calls or send text messages when you're on a ship. There is a TV in your stateroom, but don't expect it to be state-of-the-art or particularly large. There's not a whole lot of channel selection, so if you're planning on getting your entertainment from the television, I would recommend bringing your own shows on a laptop or tablet or your cell phone. There's often a camera pointed at the front of the ship, and there's often something pointed at the pool on Lido, as you can see here. It's a slow day. The ship is still currently boarding. 